You might be going through a transition period right now or what I like to call a breaking point or a turning point in your life where something needs to change, something needs to shift and you don't know what that is. In this video, we're gonna get to what that actually is, what needs changing and why you are feeling like stagnant why you are feeling like nothing is moving, why you are feeling resistance to get that ball rolling. So first of all, stop being so hard on yourself. For a life upgrade, we want to understand that pushing and stressing and putting our bodies subconsciously through unnecessary stress is not going to help us get a healthier better life you have made it this far you have decided that you want to change so now we can drop the negative self-talk we can drop the self-pity we can drop the victim mindset because now we're moving into action mode you've clicked on the video you have made this decision so you're already halfway there baby <laughs> By a life upgrade, I mean you are currently feeling stagnant. You're feeling like you could, should, or maybe want to do more. Whether it's to do more in your business, your friendships, your relationship, whether it's to find a new hobby, whether it's to learn a new skill, but you're feeling like, what the hell do I do? A life upgrade is also upgrading yourself. It's you becoming your own project, getting healthier and wealthier, building sustainable good habits for future you. Because on this channel, we are thinking predominantly about our future selves and how we can benefit them. Before I get into the questions, I want you to grab a notebook or get out the notes app on your phone and get ready to write down these questions. I always recommend putting pen to paper. I feel like it gets the mind thinking way more because these questions can be used in a deep journal practice. I am big on journaling. I have a video all about how I changed my life in six months while journaling. So you can also watch that. But these questions are incredible to journal on. Now, some of these questions I got from Sahil Bloom's newsletter. Sahil Bloom is like a constant content creator, personal development guru type person. His content is absolutely incredible. And in his newsletter, he sends out journal prompts, thought provoking questions and tips. Now, some of these questions are my own, some are his. The first question is, if I knew that I would die in 10 years, what would I do today? 10 years is enough time to still take essential action that is going to benefit the future you, but it's also not enough time to think of doing something that you don't enjoy. You still want to be enjoying your everyday, but you also want to be looking out for future you because when we're asking the question, what would you do if you would die tomorrow? It's not really a valid question because most of us wouldn't, you know, think of starting a business, for example. We wouldn't think of investing or something, but we would think of, you know, doing something like spending time with family, spending time with friends, doing something crazy or something like that. So if you had 10 years, what would you do today? And what would you start to do? What would you build? Because this will tell you what your priorities are and what you really want to focus on and you might get an idea of how you actually want to spend the next 10 years of your life because we overestimate what we can do in a year but we underestimate what we can do in 10 years so much change and so much growth can happen in 10 years especially if you're in your mid early 20s these are like the, the most life-changing years the second question is what do i feel is lacking from my life right now you can separate this into categories categories like personal, financial, relationships, habits, business and the spiritual because actually thinking about what you're lacking rather than what you want more of can be a great practice to think of what you do need more of but also it's just a different way of framing the question so what are you lacking for example last year I was lacking the financial stability I was lacking the financial freedom I was two years ago I was lacking meaningful connections and good friends so it shifts every single year and if you do this practice year on year you'll notice that things are constantly shifting and your life is constantly changing and now I'm in a phase where yeah maybe finances are better but maybe I have relationships things in my relationships that feel like they're lacking so it shifts and changes and it's a great way to notice your growth who are the five people 
that you spend your most time with and how do they impact your growth? We all know that we become the five people that we spend the most time with, right? But it's really important to reflect on those five people and how they are impacting your growth. Are they helping it? Are they hindering it? What are they doing to help? And how are they impacting your daily actions that you take? Because not just your growth, your growth can feel quite wishy-washy, but how are they impacting your daily actions? Whether it's someone you live with and they're bringing you down, or it's a friend you're spending time with, uh, are they lifting you up? Do you want to spend more time with those people? Figure that out with the five people that you spend the most time with, because then you'll understand, okay, maybe I want to spend more time with this person, maybe I need to spend less time with this person, maybe I want to start my days with this person because they inspire me so much. If I repeated this for 100 days, would my life be better or worse? This is an interesting question because how are you living your life? It's kind of a reflection on habits. If you repeated what you were doing every single morning, every single evening, your habits, would your life become better or become worse? If you were eating the same foods, would it become better, would it become worse? And this is a reflection on the habits that you have and how they can benefit future you. If someone observed my actions for a week, what would they say my priorities are? So much of the time we think we know what our priorities are and we think we know what we're working on and then we actually reflect on the actions that we're taking and it doesn't reflect what our priorities are. So this question is great to ask yourself if you are feeling like you are prioritizing your business but nothing is moving in your business for example or you are prioritizing your friendships, your dating life but nothing is happening then reflect on the actions you took in the past week or the past two weeks. How many dates did you go on for example if this is your priority? How much outreach did you do in your business if this is your priority? And if that's minimal, if that's not act, if that's not living up to the, ma the ways that you're thinking, if your actions aren't living up to what you're saying, then you will understand, then you will realize that it's a priority thing that you need to shift and that could be why you are feeling stagnant and why your life isn't upgrading. This is a fun question, especially if you are stuck between decision making right now. If you are stuck between making an important decision in your life, Ask yourself this question. If I were the main character in a movie of my life, what would the audience be screaming at me to do right now? When I was feeling a bit out of alignment, I say, I guess, with my business and what I'm doing, then I always imagined the audience screaming at me, Frida, it's going to work, stop doubting yourself and just take the damn action. So for example, when I was starting YouTube, just record the damn video, okay? Just record the video because it's going to work and you will love it. Stop procrastinating, just record the video. When I was quitting my cafe job and I was scared, I was imagining the audience looking down, they knew what happens at the end, you know? They know what's gonna happen, they know I'm going to succeed. So they're screaming at me saying, just quit the job, just quit the job because it's all going to work, you don't have to worry. So what are the audience screaming at you to do right now? What lie have I repeated to myself so many times that it feels like the truth? This is a reflection on limiting beliefs and things that you are telling yourself. Limiting beliefs are like those annoying things that are just in the way and they serve absolutely no purpose but they are so hard to get rid of. I'm trying to think of a good analogy for limiting beliefs. Like something that is there and you have to like pick a way out. Like when you have hair on fabric pants or something if you have a cat or a dog and you have hair and you have to like pick away at the hair because you have no lint roller that is like limiting beliefs it takes time and it takes energy and it takes effort and it's annoying and you don't enjoy it but limiting beliefs are they're blocking you they're blocking you from looking good they're blocking you from feeling good you know maybe we can think of a better analogy for limiting beliefs if you can think of anything then please comment that below because i feel like the lint roller and the hair just wasn't quite doing it justice but thinking of lies that you have been telling yourself recently that have now become the truth for example is it the fact that for me i don't have many youtuber subscribers so i why am i bothering why am I bothering making these videos? Why am I bothering spending hours editing and filming and scripting these videos when no one's watching and yeah, like no one's going to watch, my YouTube channel is never going to grow. If I was telling myself those things every single day, have they now become my truth and I don't believe that my YouTube channel is gonna grow, for example? Is there something like that that you have been telling yourself in your life? I know that for, for a long time, I was telling myself accidentally that I couldn't make progress in the gym 
or that I wasn't a gym girl and that stopped me from making progress in the gym because it was a limiting belief on myself that I had. So if you have those limiting beliefs, take this time to reflect on things that you might be currently telling yourself that you think are true, that you think are your truth and start to debunk them and understand why they're not your truth, why they're actually a lie and not serving you. What do you love and wish you did more of? I want to end the video with this question because it's a nice light-hearted question to make you understand what might need changing in life right now. What do you love and wish that you did more of and how can you do more of that? Is it something to do with hobbies that you have? Is it spending time with a certain someone in your life? Or is it writing? Is it reading? Is it something that you wish you could turn into a business? What do you love and wish that you could do more of? For me, it's YouTube. I wish I could spend so much more time on YouTube and I know that I probably can actually. I just have mental blocks and limiting beliefs holding me back from actually spending more time and creating more videos for you. Right now it's every Sunday but I want to do more and I want to script even more and spend more time writing. Anyway that is the last one. What do you love and wish that you did more of? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I have a video coming out every single Sunday and sometimes I have a bonus and mini vlog or something like that. Have a beautiful day, week, month life. My newsletter is linked below too. Let's all, you know, get slightly better every day. Um, it's the slightly better letter. Thank you so much. Bye!